Hi, it's Katrina. Hurricanes demonstrate the enormous power of Mother Nature. From their enormous size to causing extreme devastation, here are 11 of the most horrific hurricanes of all time. Number 11. Andrew Only four Category 5 hurricanes have made landfall in the U.S. Hurricanes are measured on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which runs from Category 1 up to Category 5. Currently, it only measures the wind speeds produced by a hurricane, but won't necessarily tell you about tornadoes or flooding or other extremely damaging things that come along with it. One of them, Hurricane Andrew, battered the South Florida coast on August 24, 1992, the day after it swept through parts of the Bahamas. Nicknamed the Big One, Andrew approached the southern Miami-Dade County coast during the night, with wind gusts measuring up to 177 miles per hour before instruments failed. Category 5 means that catastrophic damage will occur, buildings will collapse, debris will fly all around, windows will get blown out, and power poles will be ruined. Residents waiting out the storm took cover in bathrooms and closets, watching and listening in horror as their roofs were ripped off, objects slammed against their homes with brutal force, and water crept inside. The hurricane flattened entire communities, ripping trees from the ground and tossing boats, mobile homes, and vehicles around with ease. Altogether, 100,000 homes in South Florida were damaged, and 25,000 were completely destroyed. Millions of residents were left without power for weeks or months as they endured 90-plus degree temperatures, escaped zoo animals, and blocks upon blocks of leveled buildings and homes. Besides everything being destroyed, there were hundreds of monkeys, some baboons, llamas, exotic birds, and cougars on the loose. Damages amounted to $26.5 billion, while human casualties were thankfully relatively low, all things considered, amounting to 26 lost lives. Number 10. Mitch Hurricane Mitch struck Central America in late October 1998, earning itself the title of the second deadliest Atlantic hurricane on record and the deadliest hurricane to hit the Western Hemisphere in over 200 years. Mitch formed as a tropical depression in the Western Caribbean Sea on October 22nd, culminating into a Category 5 storm as it barreled toward the mainland. Sustained winds intensified to 180 miles per hour, with gusts reaching 200 miles per hour. The hurricane made landfall in Guatemala a week later, then moved through Central America and eventually reached Florida as a tropical storm. Floods and mudslides brought on by heavy rainfall were especially catastrophic in Honduras and Nicaragua, where entire villages were swept away, crops were majorly damaged, and thousands of lives were lost. Guatemala and Panama also sustained heavy damages, although their death tolls were much lower. Over 11,000 people, perhaps as many as 18,000, died from Hurricane Mitch, and millions were rendered homeless or were severely impacted in other ways. Mitch destroyed hundreds of thousands of homes, with damages amounting to around $5 billion. Number 9. Great Hurricane of 1780 Back in October 1780, before the World Meteorological Association began naming hurricanes, or even existed for that matter, a powerful storm that came to be known as the Great Hurricane of 1780 tore through the Caribbean like a battering ram, ultimately claiming 20,000 lives. Measuring by fatalities, it was the deadliest known Atlantic hurricane in history. The storm happened long before the advent of modern storm tracking technology, so its point of origin, strength, and exact path are unknown. Researchers believe it made landfall in Barbados, one of the three hardest-hit locations, which also includes Martinique and St. Lucia. Each island's death toll numbered in the thousands, and there was extensive property damage. At the time, Great Britain and France, which were both embroiled in the ongoing American Revolution, had numerous warships in the Caribbean, many of which perished, along with their sailors. Number 8. Hugo Hurricane Hugo was a Cape Verde storm, a type of hurricane that forms in the deep tropics at low latitudes, resulting from a tropical wave that travels from West Africa and passes over the Cape Verde Islands. Hugo began forming on September 9, 1989 and intensified as it crossed the Atlantic. Within days, wind speeds exceeded 74 miles per hour, eventually reaching sustained speeds of 190 miles per hour, qualifying Hugo as a Category 5. Hugo crossed through the Caribbean as a Category 4 storm, affecting the islands of Guadalupe, Montserrat, St. Croix, and St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Montserrat's entire power grid was knocked out, and Hugo was the island's costliest hurricane on record, and not only in financial terms. 
Ecological destruction resulted in the island's bat populations decreasing 20-fold, and numerous endemic bird species also declined. Damages in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico totaled an estimated $1 billion. Over 90% of the buildings were destroyed in St. Croix, where wind gusts measured up to 168 miles per hour. Looting ensued, and the U.S. military was deployed to get the island back under control. Thankfully, the cost in human lives was much lower, with three people perishing in the storm. Puerto Rico also suffered significant damage, and although only eight lives were lost, around 28,000 residents became homeless. But Hugo's wrath wasn't over. The storm headed toward the U.S. coast next, where it became the strongest hurricane to make landfall in the country in two decades, setting new storm surge records in some places, including McClellanville, South Carolina, where the storm surge measured 20.2 feet high and causing over $1 billion in damages to South Carolina's timber industry alone. Number 7. Camille Hurricane Camille started as a tropical wave off the African coast on August 5, 1969, moving west across the Atlantic before becoming a tropical depression south of Cuba nine days later. The next day, Camille struck western Cuba as a Category 2 hurricane, and the storm was just getting started. It rapidly intensified as it moved through the Gulf of Mexico and toward the Louisiana-Mississippi region. The hurricane made landfall in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi as a Category 5 storm before quickly weakening into a tropical depression as it moved inland and eventually emerged offshore, where it briefly re-strengthened before being absorbed by a frontal storm. Camille left vast damage in its wake, leveling nearly the entire Mississippi coast and causing additional damage and deaths inland. Over 259 people perished as a result of the storm, and the damages totaled $1.42 billion. It's one of four Category 5 hurricanes to make landfall in the U.S., and was the sixth most intense Atlantic hurricane. Number 6. 1935 Labor Day Hurricane Formerly known as Hurricane 3, the Great Labor Day Hurricane of 1935 was the most intense hurricane on record ever to hit the U.S. in terms of pressure and one of four recorded Category 5 hurricanes to ever make landfall in the country. It formed east of the Bahamas and struck the Florida Keys in Miami days later on September 2nd during the Great Depression, with maximum sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and gusts as much as 200 miles per hour. The hurricane then moved northward near the western Florida coast, once again making landfall as a Category 2 storm near Cedar Keys before moving across Georgia and the Carolinas. It then re-emerged offshore near Norfolk, Virginia. Florida, mostly the Florida Keys, suffered nearly all the losses caused by the hurricane, with a 40-mile-wide path of destruction from south of Key Largo to north of Marathon. Nearly all man-made structures were destroyed, along with the Florida East Coast Railroad tracks running from Miami to the Keys, with the modern-day railway terminating in mainland Florida. The death toll is estimated at 409, including 244 confirmed dead and 165 people who went missing. Forecasting errors by the Weather Bureau were largely to blame for the number of fatalities, as the service had predicted the hurricane would bypass the area and go into the Gulf of Mexico. Number 5. Gilbert On September 12, 1988, Hurricane Gilbert barreled into Jamaica before traveling to Mexico and Texas. The storm first achieved hurricane status west of the Dominican Republic two days earlier, before making landfall in Jamaica as a Category 5 storm, with 175 mile per hour winds. It covered the entire island with an eye measuring 40 miles wide, ripping the roofs off homes and damaging or destroying around 80% of Jamaica's houses. Out of 2 million citizens, around 500,000 people were left homeless. Over 200 residents died, and almost everyone lost power. Gilbert hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula two days later, destroying around half of the hotels in the resort city of Cancun and severely damaging nearby Cozumel. Around 200,000 people were left homeless. The hurricane sparked a flash flood along the Santa Cantina River, washing away four buses and numerous cars filled with around 200 passengers. Three people died in Texas in tornadoes spurred by Gilbert. It was the most intense recorded hurricane to hit Mexico, killing 318 people total and inflicting $2.98 billion of damage. Number 4. Katrina I feel bad just talking about this one. Luckily, I was named before this happened and I was studying abroad that year. Hurricane Katrina was the costliest, most destructive, and one of the deadliest hurricanes ever to hit U.S. soil. It laid siege to the Gulf Coast, particularly the city of New Orleans, Louisiana, in late August 2005. 
It formed as a tropical depression roughly 200 miles southeast of the Bahamas and made its first landfall on the Florida coast as a Category 1 storm, killing two people. After passing through Florida, Katrina weakened and was reclassified as a tropical storm, but it regained strength and grew over the Gulf of Mexico, becoming a Category 5 storm with 175 mile per hour winds. It made landfall along the Mississippi-Louisiana border as a Category 4 storm with sustained winds of 120 miles per hour, devastating the cities of Biloxi and Gulfport, Mississippi, and flooding around 80% of New Orleans and nearby parishes. The hurricane storm surge overwhelmed the city's levee system that held back the waters of nearby Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne, spewing forth an influx of water that devastated the below-sea-level city. The hurricane and subsequent flooding killed an estimated 1,833 people and left millions homeless. Damages totaled somewhere between 108 and 160 billion, according to NOAA. Critics blamed the losses largely on the mismanagement of the disaster and its aftermath, including slow local, state, and federal responses. Many residents did not follow evacuation orders, further straining the limited available resources. New Orleans' metro area population dropped from 1.386 million in 2005 to 1.04 million in 2006, according to Live Science, restoring to 1.252 million by 2014. Business establishments and housing also fell as a result of the hurricane, and as of 2019, had not yet returned to pre-Katrina numbers. All these years later, New Orleans is still a work in progress. Number 3. Galveston Hurricane The Great Galveston Hurricane of 1900 is considered the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history. A Category 4 hurricane descended on the island city of Galveston, Texas on September 8th of that year, with estimated wind speeds exceeding 135 miles per hour. Over 3,600 buildings were destroyed, and fatalities numbering somewhere between 6,000 and 12,000. The U.S. Weather Bureau mistakenly predicted that the hurricane would travel over Florida and toward New England, despite scientists in Cuba being aware that it would likely travel toward the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane technology wasn't very advanced at the time, but it was improving, and the Cuban scientists had warned the Weather Bureau about the impending storm. But a hurricane warning could not be issued without approval through Washington, which this report did not have. Days before the tragic disaster, Isaac Klein, the Weather Bureau's chief observer in Galveston, began to suspect that the report about the hurricane traveling up Florida and to New England was woefully flawed. Klein tried to warn Galveston residents, but it was too late, and the needless tragedy served as a sobering wake-up call about the importance of communicating with clarity and prioritizing human safety over politics. Number 2. Maria In September 2017, a Category 5 hurricane named Maria battered the Caribbean islands of Dominica, St. Croix, and Puerto Rico. For all three, it was the worst disaster in recorded history. Maria was also the deadliest storm of the 2017 hurricane season, which also saw mass devastation at the hands of Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. Dominica experienced a communication blackout and nearly all its infrastructure and vegetation were eradicated. Hurricane Maria reached its peak in the Eastern Caribbean with maximum sustained winds of 175 miles per hour before making landfall in Puerto Rico as a Category 4 storm. The island's population suffered massively due to flooding, a lack of resources, slow relief responses, and the worst electrical blackout in U.S. history, leaving thousands of homes and businesses without power. Altogether, around 3,059 people lost their lives at the hands of Hurricane Maria. New research shows that Maria was one of the deadliest storms in U.S. history after the death toll was confirmed at more than 70 times the original count. Number 1. Okeechobee Hurricane Also known as the San Felipe Segundo Hurricane, the Okeechobee Hurricane of 1928 was the second deadliest recorded hurricane in the U.S. It first hit Guadalupe, killing an estimated 1,200 people, before proceeding on toward Martinique, Montserrat, and Nevis all which sustained damages, although far less severe than the effects endured in Guadalupe. Next, the hurricane arrived in Puerto Rico, where it became the only recorded Category 5 storm to make landfall on the island, peaking with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. Hundreds of thousands of homes were destroyed, and around 24,728 were destroyed completely, with over 500,000 people ending up homeless. An estimated 312 people died, and damages totaled around $50 million, or $744 million in modern money. 
The hurricane then crossed through the Bahamas, where it killed 18 people, then headed to Florida, where it made landfall with sustained winds of 145 miles per hour. An estimated 2,500 people were killed in the mainland U.S., with most fatalities occurring in Florida, particularly Lake Okeechobee, where rainwater filled the lake to the brim and crumbled the dikes, causing water to pour out from the lake's southern edge and flood onto nearby farmland, sweeping away homes and their inhabitants. I hope none of you ever have to experience a hurricane like this. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everyone, and be sure to share any tips you have for getting through a hurricane in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!